Hello everyone, this is Nathan Builds Robots with another 3D printer review. Today I'm going to be checking out the Artillery Sidewinder X2. They're hoping that the improvements that they made over the last edition should help them stay on top of the competition and maintain their position as one of the best 3D printers in this larger form factor. So let's unbox this thing and check it out. It looks like we get a mostly assembled top section of the machine. That means you can start printing faster and there's less things for you to mess up when you're putting it together. So it looks like I'm just going to put this top section of the printer on here. Oh wow, this is pretty neat. If you've ever built a computer, you'll know you have these expansion cards that you can plug in, like a graphics card or a sound card. This uses one of those standard connectors. It's a PCI style connector which is great for transferring a lot of data and power. That completes all of the electrical connections from the base into this gantry. That's a pretty cool touch. Okay, so there's some replacement ribbon cables and a USB drive. Don't have to mess around with those tiny little SD cards. Also, you've got some replacement wheels and a replacement volcano style nozzle. I'm going to tip this on its side. So we've got some captive screws here that are used to attach the bottom half of the printer to the top half. You can use the Allen wrench to do this, but I've got a drill, so I'm going to use that. I'm going to do the last little bit of torquing by hand, just so I know how tight these are. Unfortunately, this printer doesn't come with a pair of clippers, so you're going to need to supply your own. And get rid of these zip ties. Now we've unlocked the print head and it can move around. These little brackets here are for the spool holder. This gets installed up top. Now I'm going to adjust the eccentric nuts for the y-axis. I always find it's easier to just completely unscrew the heated bed and put it off to the side while you do this. So now I can access these really easily. All right, everything's good now. One of the things that people really like about these machines is how quiet they are. This thing's barely making any noise right now. That's due in large part to the fact that they use an AC heated bed. So this is powered off 110 volts from the wall. That makes it so that the power supply isn't having to work nearly as hard. Also, this bed can heat up a lot faster. Because you're drawing power directly from the wall, you have a lot more electricity on tap. Wow, the heated bed is almost completely up to temperature, which is really difficult to do for a heated bed this size. 80 degrees that fast. Pretty impressive. Oh, wow. And this uh, Z-axis moves pretty darn fast, too. Failed to enable bed leveling. I think I cheated a little bit. I didn't actually do the bed leveling procedure that you're supposed to do. So let me run that bed leveling calibration. This printer moves around really fast. It definitely doesn't want to waste your time. Oh cool, I've got a little light here too. All right, and after that finished, I think I'll hit EEPROM save just to make sure it saves that bed leveling information. And this is a good sign when I push this filament out, We've got some black filament coming out ahead of the pink filament. That means they test ran this hot end, which is always a good sign. That just means you'll have better quality control. They're actually testing the things before they send them out. Oh, wee! Oh, that moves fast. This thing's moving. For how big this printer is, it really moves quickly and efficiently. It heats up fast, it moves around fast. Aside from a little bit of stepper motor noise, this machine is nice and quiet when it's running. The part cooling fan just kicked on and it's not that loud because they're using a larger 40 by 20 millimeter fan instead of the tiny ones that most Creality machines use. Uh, this will be able to flow a lot more air in a quiet setting like this. I'll put the mic right up next to everything so you can hear the noises that it's making. Super clean edges, nothing really to complain about there. One of the things I really like about this artillery sidewinder is that it's completely silent when it's not printing. I and mean, it's turned on right now and it's not making any noise at all. That's cool. It's got a little RGB LED in here. So you can see that changed colors. Now it's red. Now I'm printing out some weird coat hanger things. Here's a sample of audio so you can see how loud this printer is. I printed out this little plunge dagger so I can like poke stuff, like gah, but I wanted a bigger one so I can do my unboxings with it. So I printed out this giant one. Now I've got this giant plunge dagger. It's the size of a small shovel or trowel. It does quite a number on these boxes. Gah, gah. <laughs> so I'll be using this in my future unboxing videos. I increased the extrusion a little bit so you can see I'm extruding at about 
because I was getting what appeared to be a little bit of under extrusion with this hot end. The extruder only has a single drive gear, and generally speaking, the gold standard is a dual gear direct drive extruder. I did make an over extrusion profile, which treats this 0.4 millimeter nozzle as if it's a 0.6 millimeter nozzle. So it's pushing out more plastic than the diameter of the nozzle. That makes it print faster, but you have some downsides to it. On this print, it worked just fine. And on this print, it didn't work so well. So it just depends on what you're making. So it looks like we have a bit of a failed print here. If you have a part that's not really gonna have issues with bed adhesion, then over extrusion might be an option for you. And this just greatly increases the print speed. It's as if you're printing with a 0.6 millimeter nozzle. All of the parts that I printed, I just let it cool down and they just slid right off the build tray. There's absolutely no curling, so they stayed perfectly flat against the bed. And when I pulled them off, it was super easy. So, I mean, it's just a really well-tuned bed. One thing I really like about this printer is how speedy the Z-axis is. But when I go to home it, watch how fast it goes. This thing's moving pretty fast. And look at it go. Woo. A lot of printers have really slow Z-axis travel limits built into their firmware. It's kind of a holdover when you're using a single axis lead screw. You had a single motor trying to move the entire axis up and down. So it'd be a little more difficult. But once you've upgraded to a printer that has dual Z-screw motors, it should be able to move the Z-axis much faster. So they turned up the Z-axis travel speed on this printer. This is really helpful because when you're initially homing the machine, it's faster. When it does its mesh bed leveling, you're doing a lot of Z-traveling for that. So it completes that task a lot faster. And it also allows you to turn on enable Z-hop on retractions. So basically what that does is whenever you would just retract the filament, it also picks up the print head a little bit, moves over, and then sets it back down. That helps you get much more reliable printing. Normally this comes with a pretty big speed penalty if you have a slow Z-axis because it's going, all right, pick that Z-axis up. Now let's move it over and put it back down. But with this printer, since the Z-axis is so fast, it's just like, you know, Super speedy. If you're printing a delicate object and the printer is just moving back and forth over the tops of some of the walls or delicate features that are hanging out, it can repeatedly stress those and break them off mid-print. But with Z-hop retractions, since you're physically lifting the Z-axis up, it's not gonna run into those other features. So it just cleans up your prints and makes it more reliable. I really appreciate the fan selection that they used on this machine. You can see this is turned on right now and it's making absolutely no noise. Something that really bothers me about my Ender 3s is they're super noisy uh, because they have fans that are constantly on whenever you turn the machine on. So you have to unplug the machine and physically turn it off whenever you're done if you want that noise to go away. If you look at this artillery sidewinder, all the fans turn off when it's at idle. So it's perfectly quiet, you can leave it turned on, and when you're ready to start a print job, you just plug in your flash drive and press go. You can tell that they paid attention to detail with this machine because there's a bunch of little things like that that just make it easier to use and just kind of more pleasant than an Ender 3. And even when this printer is running, the fans aren't that loud. They've really done a good job with fan selection on this machine, so I give it an A plus in fan selection. Most of my other Ender 3s, I've torn them apart to take out all the fans. It's really kind of annoying that they're selling these products for hundreds of dollars and they put the cheapest, noisiest, shitty fans in them. If you look on the bottom, there's only a single fan down here and that cools off the power supply and the motherboard. They were able to get away with this because thanks to the AC powered heated bed, they don't need a large power supply. So instead of drawing 350 watts into the power supply and then sending 250 of those watts over into the heated bed, they just bypass the power supply altogether using a solid state relay. So there's a solid state relay on this motherboard that basically turns the power to the bed on and off directly from the wall, just like a light switch would. The advantage of this is instead of specking a 350 watt power supply, which is common on most 3D printers, they can get away with a much smaller 100 watt power supply because all it's powering is the main board, the stepper motors, and the heater cartridge in the hot end. And since that power supply is much smaller and has less power consumption, they don't need to put a big fan on it to help cool it down. So, you know, really thoughtful touch there, helping keep this machine quiet and run more efficiently. This also means they can use a much more powerful heated bed. I don't know what the exact wattage is on this thing, but I've noticed it heats up a whole lot faster than my other 3D printers. One of the longest steps in starting up a new print is waiting for the heated bed to get up to temperature. Again, it's just another one of those small touches that makes this thing a joy to use. Another Ender 3 thing that I really don't like is their choice of part cooling fan. You can see on the Sprite hot end, 
they're using a really tiny part cooling fan. I don't think you could even blow out a baby's birthday candle with one of these. On the Artillery Sidewinder, they've upgraded this to a 4020 part cooling fan, which has a lot more cooling capacity. So your printer will be able to keep up with the part cooling needs of those fast, large prints. There are workarounds where you can replace the part cooling fan. In fact, I've made a couple videos about that, but you shouldn't have to modify a brand new printer just to get it to work the way you want it to. Any printer at this price point should have amazing print quality, and I'm glad to report that this one does. I tried out some thick-walled heavy prints, some smaller, more detailed stuff, and got the calibration cube, and a couple of these little knife things. Everything turned out great. The only minor complaint I might make is that it's using a Volcano hot end, so Volcano hot ends aren't as good at creating small details just because they're more designed as a high flow unit. So it's really geared towards printing out large thick objects like this. And if you're doing small detailed models, it still might be nice to have a smaller 3D printer to take those on. I did have one issue. This one was a failed print. I was printing it all the way up to the corner of the print bed here. Both of these prints were made with an over extrusion profile that I made. You get significantly faster print speeds, but you can run into issues with it. Eventually it peeled up and the print failed. However, I re-sliced the model, making it a tiny bit smaller so I could get it away from that corner, and I also printed it with a brim, and it stayed perfectly stuck to the bed, and this came out just awesome. When the print was done, it just cooled down and popped right off the bed, and it's super flat. There are three small complaints I have about this machine, and I'll go over them now. The first thing that I'm not a big fan of is their use of a single gear extruder here. I prefer to have a dual gear extruder just because I've been able to get more consistent printing results out of it. The second issue has to do with the heated bed and that's just basically the issues I was having with prints staying stuck to the very tippy corners of this bed. It heats up so fast it doesn't have time for the heat to soak out and get to those corners so I wasn't able to get my stuff to stick there. Um, if you just stick to this wide central area you should be fine. The third issue is that the spool holder is a bit wobbly and wonky. I'm not a big fan of this design. It works great. I mean, let me just put something up there. You can see it just fits any size spool and it spins just fine. It's just I would prefer something that's a little more solidly built. So what are my final thoughts on the Artillery Sidewinder X2? I really like it. There's way too many 3D printer companies out there that are trying to undercut their competitors on price while sacrificing build quality. Essentially, they're participating in a race to the bottom in order to build the world's shittiest printer. Just take a look at this. This is one of the Artillery Sidewinder's main competitors. This is the Ender 3S1 Plus. The design is very similar. It's got a 300 by 300 millimeter build volume. It's got dual lead screws, but you can see it's a little bit shorter. These are really skimpy aluminum extrusion here which will be less rigid overall, so you'll have more print problems due to the imprecision of that axis. And again, at the bottom, they're using a thinner extrusion. I mean, I assume this is a cost-cutting measure. The base on this machine is just a mishmash of random parts that are kind of stuck together. Compare that to the Artillery Sidewinder. This is a single-piece welded sheet steel construction. Check out this wiring harness. It's just dangling off to the side. And when we turn it on, you get fan noise. Why do I have fan noise when I turned it on and it's not doing anything? I always have to turn this thing off when I'm done using it. Get that fan noise to go away. All right, look how slow this Z-axis is. Taking your sweet time traveling that two inches there. Okay, there we go. Now I'm gonna start the mesh bed leveling. It goes over to the corner. And what is this? It just errors out immediately. So I unbox this thing, put it together, gonna start up the first print job, and it can't even do that. I mean, that kind of thing just leaves a bad taste in your mouth. So it's just kind of disappointing to see. Now this printer just it won't do anything after that. So I'm just kind of frustrated with this machine. I just got it, and it doesn't even work. So what are you supposed to do? Compare that to the artillery. You fire it up. It works right away, easy to put together, really clean design. Why do we have these blingy wheels? And why do we have a weird version of firmware that refuses to do anything? If you like receiving a broken printer and then spending hours on Reddit and forums trying to figure out how to fix it, then maybe you'll like a Creality machine. But if you want something that just works, go with the Artillery. It's clear to me that Artillery has paid attention to detail when putting this thing together, and they've created a really spectacular product. It's got none of the issues that I've experienced on a lot of other budget 3D printers, 
and there's a lot of thoughtful touches that make it a joy to use. It's an incredibly well-rounded printer, and I dare say it's similar to a printer that I would have designed myself. It prioritizes precision, reliability, user experience, clean aesthetic design, and on top of all of that, they've designed it to be super quiet, which is one of the things that I'm a real stickler about. So overall, I'd say this is the better machine out of the two, and it comes in at quite a bit cheaper. The one thing I like about the S1 over the Artillery Sidewinder is their dual direct drive extruder, but overall, I think this is a better package in terms of usability and price per performance. So, thanks for watching this episode of Nathan Builds Robots. I'll leave links to where you can purchase these printers in the description below, and I'll see you in the next video. What are you doing down there? Sit. Someone sit.